Welcome to Statistics Made Simple and I am Savita Valsang. In this video, I will be explaining organization of data which is an important topic for the first few students. In this particular topic, there are many terminologies and concepts which are explained. So let us start first with statistical inquiry. A statistical inquiry means a search for knowledge through statistical methods. For example, study of the population of India, study of the scoring pattern of students in an exam, study of the wage structure of factory workers, etc. Now there are two different stages of statistical inquiry. First is planning and preparation and second is the execution of survey. Now this is an important two marker. Starting with planning and preparation for the success of any statistical inquiry, a perfect planning and preparation is essential. In planning, the following factors are to be carefully considered. First, the object of an inquiry, then the scope of the inquiry, units used for collection and measurement, sources of data, method of collection of data, framing a format, the accuracy level and the type of inquiry. Second is the execution of the survey. After planning, the next step is execution. The steps are setting a team of administrators, designing of questionnaire, selection and training of enumerators, field work by enumerators and supervision, follow-up work in case of non-response, analysis of collected data, preparation of final report. So let us start now with collection of data. Now the first step of statistical inquiry is to collect facts and figures relating to a particular survey, whether the inquiry is for business, economics or social causes. There are some important terms which we should understand. First is the investigator. So the investigator is the person who conducts the statistical inquiry. Then we have the enumerator. The person who collects the information for the investigator is called as an enumerator. Then we have the respondents or the informants. These are persons from whom the information will be collected. In any statistical survey, there are two types of data. First is primary data and second is secondary data. Data which are collected for the first time directly from the field by the investigator is called as primary data. There are different methods of collection of primary data like through direct personal observation, indirect oral interview, information through agencies, mailed questionnaire, schedules sent through enumerators. What is a direct personal observation? Here the investigator extracts the required information by personal observation of the units. The investigator must be a keen observer and he'll cross-examine the informants and record the necessary information. Some of the merits of this method are it's their true and reliable data can be collected. In this method, the degree of accuracy can be high and there is uniformity and homogeneity can be maintained. There are some demerits as well for this method. When the area is large, this method is not suitable. The investigator may collect biased information and this method is going to be expensive and time consuming. And if the investigator is untrained, then it will not bring good result. Next, we'll discuss about indirect oral interview. If the informant is not ready to give any information, the method of indirect oral interview can be followed. Under this method, the investigator approaches the witnesses or third parties who are in touch with the informant. Then persons who are supposed to have knowledge about the problem under investigation are interrogated and the desired information is collected. The merits are this method is simple and convenient and this method is free from the bias and prejudice of the respondent. The demerits are 
interview with an inappropriate person may not yield correct results and also the witness may supply biased information according to their own interests. Third is information through agencies. Under this method, local agents or correspondents will be appointed. They collect the information and transmit it to the investigator. Now, these agents who collect information from the informants are generally called as correspondents. This method is generally used when information is to be obtained at regular intervals from a wide area. One example can be newspapers. Some of the merits are this method is very cheap and economical and it is useful where information is needed regularly. Demerits are the information may be biased and it may be difficult to maintain the degree of accuracy and uniformity. Fourth is the mailed questionnaire. Questionnaire is a list of questions where the answers are filled by the informants and these answers are the required information for the investigation. Now the questionnaire is sent to the respondents who are expected to write the answers in the space provided in the questionnaire. The questionnaire will be sent to the informants through mail. Then a covering letter is also sent along with the questionnaire requesting the informants to extend their full cooperation by giving the correct information and return the duly filled questionnaire within a fixed time. Merits are this method is most economical, it saves manpower and it can be widely used where the area of investigation is large. Demerits this method cannot be used if the informants are illiterates. In this method, many informants may not respond also and in the case of non-response, follow-up work is again essential. One is the schedule sent through enumerators. It is widely used method of primary data. A number of enumerators are selected and trained for this purpose. Here, the trained investigator will collect the data through enumerators. Now, the enumerators contact the informants and collect the information through a scheduled method. So, a schedule is a list of questions where the facts will be supplied by the informants and recorded by the enumerator. The merits of this method is very useful where the informants are illiterates. In this method, the rate of non-response is lesser. And the demerits are in this method, the training of enumerators is essential and it is also time consuming and personal bias of the enumerators may lead to failure of enquiry. We will now explain the guidelines for the construction of a questionnaire. It's an important FIMA question. There are some general principles to be considered while drafting a questionnaire. The number of questions should be as less as possible. The question should be simple to understand. The question should be arranged logically. Then answers to the question should be short yes or no type and as far as possible questions regarding personal matters should be avoided. Any clarifications regarding any of the questions if necessary should be supplied in the form of a footnote. Necessary instructions should be given to the informants. Questions which require mathematical rigor or any kind of calculation should be avoided. A questionnaire should also be attractive and a question should be framed such that the validity of the information supplied by the informants can be cross-checked. The questionnaire should also assure that the information supplied will be kept confidential and shall not be used for disadvantage. Every data is the data which has already been collected and analyzed by enumerators. The sources of secondary data are published sources, that is the official publications of international bodies such as the IMF, International Monetary Fund, WHO, that is the World Health Organization, UNO, that is the United Nations Organization, and so on. Also, the official publications of central and state governments, journals, newspapers, periodicals and websites. 
the unpublished sources comprise of the records maintained at government offices municipal offices and gram panchayats and also the records maintained by research institutions and research scholars What are the different ways by which information is collected in a statistical enquiry? We have the census enumeration method and the sample survey method. Census enumeration is a complete enumeration of each and every unit of the population. The merits of census enumeration are the results are more accurate and reliable. It provides a detailed study of all the units of the population. Census method is free from sampling errors. The demerits are it requires more money labor and time this method is impossible if the population is infinite and non sampling errors are likely to be more the survey is an enumeration based on a sample the merits of the sample survey are this method requires less labor less time and is economical and it is more scientific and it is free from non sampling errors in destructive cases only this method can be used the demerits or disadvantages of the sample survey are the sample survey requires appropriate sampling method and appropriate methods of analysis if the population is too heterogeneous in nature then the use of sampling procedures is impossible and sampling errors are part of every sample survey now a small note on what is a pilot survey a survey conducted before any general survey is called as a pilot survey important topic is the methods of sampling the three different types which i am going to discuss are simple random sampling systematic sampling and stratified sampling in simple random sampling the sample is drawn in such a way that each and every unit of the population will have an equal and independent chance of being included in the sample so if there are about 100 students in a class each of the students will have an equal chance that is the probability of each one of them being selected by me will be 1 divided by 100 random sample may be selected by using either the lottery method or using random number tables second type of sampling is systematic sampling it is a sampling method where the units in a sample are selected from a larger population according to a random starting point and fixed periodic interval called as the sampling interval note that the sample size is denoted by small n and the population size is denoted by capital n let's take an example suppose capital n is 1000 and n is equal to 100 then let us select any number a between 1 and k where k in this case is equal to 10 suppose i choose a equal to 5 then the units in the sample will be a a plus k a plus 2k a plus 3k and so on so according to this example we have to select the units 5 5 plus 10 that is 15 then 5 plus 2 into 10 that will be 25 then 5 plus 3 into 10 that will be 35 and so on third type of sampling is stratified sampling when the population is heterogeneous this method is used here the population is divided into a number of subgroups called strata then each stratum is homogeneous and from each stratum appropriate number of units are randomly selected let's take an example suppose we divide a population of adults into strata by age like 18 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 50 to 59 and 60 years and above to stratify this sample the researcher would then randomly select proportional amounts of people from each age groups which would result in a stratified sample i'll now discuss some of the differences between census enumeration and sample survey if we consider each and every unit of the population then it is census enumeration whereas if we consider only a sample and then study the units in the sample it is a sample survey 
non sampling errors are likely to be more in census enumeration whereas sampling errors are more in a sample survey census enumeration is not scientific whereas the sample survey is more scientific census enumeration method is not possible if the population is infinite and the sample survey is more suitable if the population is infinite in census enumeration we require more money time and labor whereas the sample survey is more economical in destructive cases census enumeration cannot be used whereas uh, the sample survey can be used even in destructive cases let us now discuss some of the errors which we come across when we conduct a statistical enquiry the statistical error or the sampling error a statistical error is the difference between the estimated value and the actual value what are the causes for these statistical errors or sampling errors first is error of origin that means improper definition of statistical units defective questionnaire and wrong method of enquiry second is because of error of inadequacy that means you have incomplete data or insufficient data which has been collected third is error of manipulation when you analyze the data this may occur there are different classes of statistical errors we have the biased errors and the unbiased errors the errors that occur with the notice of the investigator are called as biased errors like the measuring devices are not calibrated correctly or the technique of approximation adopted is not correct whereas unbiased errors the errors that occur without the notice of the investigator are called as unbiased error for example the chance of making an overestimate is almost same as the chance of making an underestimate like the values 275 325 345 are rounded off to the nearest number 300 in this case 325 and 345 are overestimated and 275 is underestimated the last topic in this video are the types of measurement of errors first is the absolute error which is the difference between the actual value and the estimated value second is the relative error which is the ratio of the absolute error and the estimated value organization of data is a very important topic especially for the first pucs do concentrate on the various concepts which are explained in this video thank you all for watching and look out for my next video